This is a conventional Z-axis focuser used in 3D laser marking. You'll notice this lens, and it moves along with this carrier. There are also six bearings and a special coupling that couples it to the shaft of this motor. Now, because of the mass and because of the coupling, this is restricted to only around 100 focus changes per second. It's also physically large, heavy, and complex. Now, beam brush can also be used for 3D laser marking. And because we're moving only these little mirrors here, and these mirrors are directly coupled to the shaft of the scanner, it's smaller, lighter, and simpler. This is the whole thing, including the scanners. And because the moving mass is lower, we can accomplish up to a thousand focus changes per second. Now the optical system in here is much simpler, allowing higher throughput, and focus length changes are measured in meters, not just millimeters. This magazine from 1977 commemorated Love Light, the first laser show to use scanners. Laser shows really haven't evolved very much over the past 45 years because of one major obstacle. The problem is the razor sharp beam gives you only one tool to work with. It's like this Sharpie. Beam effects are restricted to rods of light and sheets of light and the combination of the two. With audience scanning, you bring these rods of light and sheets of light and point them down into the audience. But to ensure safety, lenses must be used. These lenses distort the laser beam, and they often must be mounted and adjusted on site, sometimes up on a truss. And laser graphics are restricted to simple cartoon line images with no ability to color in broad areas. Beambrush does away with all these restrictions by providing a software control tool that adjusts the divergence of the laser rapidly, linearly, and with great precision. With continually variable divergence, beam effects can take on a whole new look the beam can instantly go from pencil thin to as big as a wash light and everything in between. Audience scanning setups become a snap because you could specify the divergence and even do gradual divergence changes right there in the software. No more climbing on trusses and fiddling with external lenses. And graphic shows finally gain the ability to color in complete areas and beam brush should be used to enhance the dimensionality of 3D graphics and abstracts. Finally, the restrictions of this Sharpie are a thing of the past. So let's go see how it works. In a beam brush projector, the beam enters from the right and passes underneath the Y scanner where it hits the lens. It goes through that lens onto a two mirror arrangement we call the boomerang. After that, it hits another lens and then finally onto the XY scanners as usual. Now the boomerang is mounted to a scanner and as the boomerang is rotated, the beam can be both converged as well as diverged. For critical applications, including audience scanning, the beam divergence can be monitored using the scanner's position sensor, which can be fed into pass to provide an additional layer of safety. Now, this may look like a simple system, but there were many technical challenges to overcome by way of detailed computer analysis. First, the boomerang needed to be made light enough to allow rapid motions, but also stiff enough to prevent the mirrors from resonating and flopping all over the place. Second, Lenses needed to be custom corrected to allow a wide divergence change while also maintaining the original white balance and original beam overlap from the laser. And finally, we needed a scanner capable of moving this off balance load without overheating or causing other problems. For this, we use our Saturn 9 scanner, which can provide a thousand beam divergence changes per second without overheating. Now this is something we've been working on since 1992 and it's actually our fifth generation version of a beam brush device. Our beam brush devices have collectively been awarded six patents. Of course, once you've got this kind of optical and mechanical hardware, you need a way to drive it and control it. Our FB4 has a dedicated output just for beam brush and it doesn't sacrifice any color channels. And we've developed a broad range of tools and beyond to allow for the quick and easy application of beam brush effects. So let's go back to the studio and take a look at beam brush in action.
Welcome to a new dimension in laser light. Welcome to Beam Brush.